so much over on the website yet. Basically, I'm just practicing my Twitch setup and making sure I have everything set up. Oh, finally popped up onto the screen. So I am playing Worm Online. It's not the most exciting game, but I love it. Actually, the broadcast that I'm streaming. Alright, there we go. Okay, so this is Worm Online. Basically, it's a sandbox game that's been out in quite a few different places. But you might not have heard of it. It's one of my absolutely favorite games to play. Right now, I am hanging out in my animal pen. <laughs> yes, these are all of my sheep and my and animals. I'm grooming them. It's very exciting. Basically, I walk up to them with my grooming brush. Toolbar, walk up to them. I have a hotkey, so whenever I hit G on the keyboard, it makes them groom the cheese. Really nice, right? So I've done most of the animal stuff. When you breed animals in Worm Online, horses get the best care of them, so that's why you'll see when I mask out with them, it says like mature fat silver breed and other things like that. Meanwhile, when you or sheep, or any of the other animals. They don't get any, a unique name like that, so it just says old fat sheep. Which makes it difficult to make sure that you're not inbreeding the animals. And you don't want to inbreed the animals. As you breed them, you gain traits. And they'll spread the traits between the two animals. So, for example, with my horses, what I'm trying to do is breed five-speed horses. Those are the fastest horses that you can get in the game without adding gear on top of it. So I am trying to breed five-speed horses, and any horse that's not, well, on this farm at least, anything that's not a four-speed, I end up uh, taking over to the glue factory. But anything that is a five-speed or a four-speed, I keep, and then I keep breeding them. And now you don't want to breed your, your, with your parents or your siblings or anything like that, because you'll get negative traits in worm, and that's not a good thing. You can cure the negative traits. If you have a faux priest, they can cast Genesis on it and get rid of those negative traits. traits. But it's a, a pain in the butt. So I don't really spend a lot of time doing that. It's usually easier for me just to get, get them out of the herd and then move on. Now when it comes to things like the sheep and the cows, it doesn't really matter to me if I inbreed. I'm usually breeding them for a different purpose, like or I want their hides, or I want, well, in the case of the sheep, I want the leather from, or, sorry, not the leather, <coughs> that would be the cows. I want their uh, their wool so that I can do tailoring items with them. Over here with the cows, I use the female cows. Oh, and you can also, newly added, you can now milk sheep and get goat cheese and, like, make gouda. It's new, so I haven't actually played around with it yet. Worm is always adding new things to the game, which is just amazing. They've got a really small dev team, and uh, I love seeing the new things that they've added. Even, even you know, I'm semi paying attention to their to their website, and I see when new things crop up, etc. But they're constantly adding things that I don't even know about, that I didn't even see on it, and I hear about it in game, or I'm going through my menus, and I see it, and I'm like, whoa, that's really neat. When did they add that? Taking care of my bulls. Now, Worm is not the most exciting of games, especially not the best exciting of games to watch. You might uh, see me here standing in front of a cow and be like, wow, this is, this is something else. Wait, no, it's not. This is really boring. What are you doing, Stargrace? How can you, how can you handle standing in front of this cow and not actually doing anything? But I think that's one of the reasons I enjoy Worm. I think that's one of the reasons why I like to play it. A lot of games have you moving around all over the place, they have you very hands-on combat and stuff like that, but Worm is pretty much the exact opposite. It's very much a grinding game. It requires a lot of time and a lot of patience to get anywhere. I've been playing for 
probably about six years now, off and on. And none of my characters are even close to having a hundred in a skill. A hundred is the is the cap that you can get. To get a hundred, it would literally take oh I don't know at least a year probably of dedicating yourself to that one skill, especially dependent on the skill. For example, weaponsmithing. I've been working on weaponsmithing for e two years now, and I think my skill is around fifty. <laughs> And I haven't gotten any higher. It's one of those skills that is just the absolute slowest to level up. And you could work on it eight hours a day, five days a week, or seven days a week, you know, if you wanted to give up your weekends too. <laughs> you work on it as much as a full-time job, and it will still level up incredibly slow. And that's using sleep bonus as well, which will increase the amount of skill that you gain as you work on it. So we're just continuing to groom my cows here. This deed that I own, this property that I'm at. Is that my northern deed? I own two of them. I own one down south and I own one up north and I play on the Xanadu server. And Xanadu is one of the newer server. I mean it's not it's not brand new. It's been out for a little while now. But it's the newest one. Well technically it's not the newest one. There's a challenge server but it's a PvP server and I don't typically PvP in Worm. So we're just gonna breed some of the cows here. I can't remember Oh, I guess she's not... Oh, I guess this, this bull is too young. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's hard to... I wasn't paying attention to the name. It says adolescent. Well, you can't breed adolescents together. So let's go over here. Yay! And you see the little bar at the bottom here? It's saying that my cow and bull are getting it on. <laughs> and you get a little message that says, The aged fat cow... Sorry, the aged fat brown cow and the aged fat bull get intimate. Bow, chicka bow, wow, do do do. Just let them do their thing. Avert your eyes. Don't look, don't look. So we'll just let them do their thing. There we go. Now the brown cow will <laughs> give birth in a while. Let's see how long it will take. Nine days. So that's nine that's that's nine weeks in worm time, which is approximately nine days in real life time. So that cow won't have an offspring for nine real life days. That's what I mean by worm taking a little bit of time to, you know, to accomplish anything to get things done. So I'm gonna steal one of my horses here. There we go, and I'll show you around the property. So as you might be able to tell, over on the edges, my property is on the top of a very large hill. Let's see, it's fully enclosed with a fence so that the you know the bad guys can't get in. There we go, over by the edge. So my property has like an amazing view. Let's get rid of the the UI. There we go. And there's birds flying around, and my little sheep are happy. And that's a guard tower in the middle of the property. It'll help protect my deed. Now, I do have a spirit templar as well. You have to pay a little bit monthly on your deed for it, but what it does is it will auto attack any aggressive mobs that come into your property. Now I have, besides the main character that I'm running around on, I have two priests and they're really big babies and they're not very good at fighting. And I leave them online AFK a lot um, so that they can regenerate their mana basically. So I decided that it would be in my best interest to hire a spirit guard to take care of all the aggro mobs that might have wandered through because they made a change a couple of weeks back. What it does is, um, see this hill up here up at the top? Mobs can fall off of that and they can actually bypass these fences and they can jump right over into my property. So I was waking up um, from having my characters sit around doing nothing and finding them dead on the ground. <laughs> and when you die in Worm, you lose skills. Now, you lose a little bit less when you die on your own property as opposed to dying out in the real world, but you still lose skills. And because it takes such a long time for you to gain those skills to begin with, it's not ideal. Oh, hold on a second here. Uh, let me get my UI back. There we go. We're going to have to light my lantern here. We're going to go into a cave. And it's dark. 
Let's see if there's any mobs around. Something on the ground. There's a mountain lion pelt. Oh, I see an aged lava fiend. Oh, and there's some bugs. Fighting some cave bugs. Now, like I said, the combat is not exactly robust. My character will auto attack most of these things. Die, old cave bug. Die, die, die. Aw, oh, it's dead now. I'll come back for it later. You can skin them and get things off their corpses to make dye and meat and stuff like that. Whoa! Hello, lava fiend. I will come to you next. Oh, <laughs> you might see there's um there's these beds inside the cave. I put them there so that they could decay because they don't decay on my property. Well, they decay, but they go really slow. So instead of waiting forever for the item to decay, I decided I would just stuff them in this cave here. There we go, now I'm fighting the Lava Fiend. This character is pretty well geared, and she's got pretty good skills. Like I said, I've had her for about six years now, so I don't really have to worry when these mobs come up. Now, if it was a troll, mm, one troll I can usually handle no problem. If there's like eight trolls, then I might have an issue. Actually, I died not that long ago because I was trying to run away from a whole bunch of trolls, and I didn't feel like fighting them. Yeah, that was a mistake. I ended up losing my corpse. Had to go get it again. Everything falls off your corpse. You, die. you have to either forgo the items or run back and go pick it up. So yeah, there's a lot of beds in here. You can't use them. I just put them in here to decay. And we're just running through a tunnel that I have. Oh, it's collapsed, so you can't get any further. Not very many mobs in it today. I normally run through here and clean out the tunnels so that I can continue on my way. This tunnel has a bunch of ore in it. That's what those storage boxes are for. So this is the outside of my property. And there's my guards down there from the, the guard tower protects in a radius around the property, around the tower. So they just hang out doing their thing. I see a dead spider and a bear coming up. I live on the north coast of Xanadu. There is a lot of mobs up here. As opposed to my property down in the south where there's like nothing. There's not even... I'm lucky if I see a seal or a chicken. Every once in a while I'll see one. And it'll be, I'll, I'll be in such awe because of it. Like, ooh, wow. And I just won't want to kill it then because then there's nothing, nothing else left. But up here, there, you can't even take a step without running into something. There we go. I was too far away. I wasn't hitting it properly. Rawr. Go bear, go! You can do it. Uh, no, you can't do it. Really, I'm wearing good armor and stuff. Stand a chance. My weapon has life transfer on it. That lets me heal while I'm in combat. So my property is way up there. I'm going to show you my neighbor's place because it's just amazing. <clears throat> I'm not sure how long he's been in the place, but he's put a lot of work into it. I have a little mailbox down here for people. <laughs> you never know, travelers wandering through, they might need a mailbox. Oh, there's a dead troll. I built this path so that I could get to my neighbor's place. Oh, well, there's a pig. We'll leave him alone. He's not an aggro. He's just a little sweetheart. He's not meaning any harm. Down we go. Do do do. Looks like it's raining and worm. Another thing that I really like is that the weather changes and the seasons. So right now, I think it is spring. Normally in summer, the grass is a little bit more green. So I think it's spring. We've got fall and winter too. The leaves all change. The, the ground changes so that there's snow on it. I love it. It's just awesome. Oh, there's a hellhound. We're going to skip him and just keep running because... It's not that they're difficult to kill, it's just that they take so long to kill, and it's kind of boring. So, we're just gonna run him off, see we've already left him behind because we're so much faster. Now we're coming up to my neighbor's place now. Almost. We're almost there, almost! Hang in there! Down a little ways. Oh, I think there's another pig up there. <laughs> And another one here! Wow, what is with all the pigs? And there's a troll hanging out there too. Let's see if there's any missions right now that want a pig. 
I'm not seeing them. These missions are just little tasks that you can do on server and they give you a little bit of karma and some sleep bonus at the end when they've been completed by the server. You can do them as individuals but basically it's a community effort so it will require things like um, they urge you to slay 160 wildcats. Well you're not going to go out and slay 160 wildcats on your own. Or rather you could but it would take a really long time. <coughs> Pardon me. So basically it has everybody on the server able to participate and as you go through um, everybody does their little bit and then completes the mission. So this is my neighbor's place. He's got a beautiful place. He's been working on his docks a little bit. He's got some massive boats down there and these pillars that give off light in the dark so basically I live up that way and I know... Oh, let's get rid of this wolf on his property. Let's see if he's home. Yeah, he is. He's out chopping wood with one of his alts. Or maybe he's inside the mine. Over that way. So, basically, I always know when I'm home, because I can just see these big, huge pillars right here, all lit up. And I park my boat. My boat is this little one over here. There we go. I had the wrong target. I was still targeting that hellhound that we had in the woods. Yeah, there we go. Much better. So I don't have to do anything for combat. I just have to target the creature. And I have auto attack on, and it will just do its thing. Now, you can change the setting so that you're not fighting automatically and you choose all your stances. You'll basically still swing automatically, but you can get special moves like fixing your footing and stuff like that if you choose to do it manually. I'm just, well, I'm lazy because I'm streaming right now and I don't want to be bothered with that. For, for more difficult fights, it's a lot better if you switch it off of automatic and just do it manually and choose your choose the moves that you want to do. So I have another neighbor over there. Look, they've got this big huge statue. It's so awesome. They've got one of those statues or those uh, pillars of light off in the distance too. I can't mouse over it from here because I'm too far away. So if we make our way from the dock up the ramp here. Oh, there's a lovely rainbow. Hee <laughs> hee. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And that is one of the reasons why I love Worm. It's just so beautiful. Now you can terraform the land and build everything from scratch. So everything you see here, everything including the sidewalk, the grass, the lawn, the different platforms to their plot, they've made all of that over time. All the houses, all the bricks, all the wood, the beams, the doors, the windows, I mean everything. This um, pavilion that they've got set up. It's all handcrafted or purchased from another player. Oh, their horses have saddled. They take care of them. I don't. They've got a bear in there, too. Yep, they're breeding champion bears, I guess. Well, they've only got one, so I don't know that they're breeding them, but they're certainly doing something with them. A lot of horses. Really lovely house. Let's see if they've left their front door open, probably. Nope, it's locked. Can't get in. Sometimes the doors are open. Nice little farm. Go up to another tier. I mean, even the trees, the plants, the hedges, all of that is all player crafted. All the lanterns. And it takes a lot of time to get to the point where you're able to make those at a good quality. Now if you're just starting out the game, you can definitely make all this stuff. You can't make stone houses right away, but if after you've made a few wooden houses, you're definitely able to make stone houses if you decide to subscribe to the game. It's one of the drawbacks to being free to play. I had to put a couple of things like that in there. I mean, they want people obviously to spend a little money so that they can keep production going. Oh, that's awesome. I love that statue. It's framed with a rainbow and everything. It's just beautiful. There we go. Ooh. Let me hear ya. Ooh. <laughs> it's 
they've done a really nice job with their plot. They've put a lot of work into it. I think they live here alone, but they often have friends come in and visit. And in that case, it's nice to have a big plot like this, because then you're not bumping into one another. People can have, kind of have their own designated little areas. You don't have to worry about them. I live alone at my place. But it's also... It's quite large, because I like to have that room to work with. I like to know that if I want to have a garden, or if I want to have 12 buildings, each one dedicated to a skill, well, 12 is probably a little much, but I've wanted to have 6 buildings. Each one dedicated to a skill, I've got the room to do that. That troll is still just hanging out there with a the pig. There's a little vineyard over there. We'll make it back up to my place. We're too fast for the troll, so he'll stay down below. A worm is an absolutely massive game. If we open the map, this is the map of the server. And I live right up here. So way up there where that star is, that's where I live. Now my other place is way down here. Ooh, wait, wait. Yeah. Way down there. So it's quite a distance away. What I normally do is I have I have three characters right now. I have three active characters. I leave one of them living up top, one of them living down b below, and then Stargrace, my main character, which is who I'm on right now, I allow her to port between the two villages using karma. So what I'll do is she'll join one village for a period of time, and then I'll kick her out of that village and let her join my other village. And karma allows you to port between... Well, it allows you to port, not between, but it allows you to port to your own town. There's a 24-hour waiting period before joining a new town, and I'm usually at each place for about a week before swapping to the other one. So, it works out. It's not the most ideal of situations, but because otherwise it would take me mm, probably anywhere from, depending on the winds, between two and six hours to travel between, like real-life hours, to travel between my two deeds. Xanadu is just absolutely gigantic. So I'd much rather port between the two places. It makes it much easier, much more simple. So we're just making the, the, the crawl <laughs> as we go up on the incline. The crawl back to my own place. Do, do, do. There we go. So Worm Online is a free-to-play game. Or rather a freemium game. There is a uh, a subscription if you want. The limitations on the free-to-play is that they cannot get their skills over 20 and they do go up to 100. It's not that noticeable when you're first starting out. It's going to take you a while to get all of your skills to 20 but eventually if you want to build the bigger things or if you want to start selling some of the better tools and armor and stuff like that it's usually best to go on with a subscription. The really good part is that you don't have to pay real life money for it if you don't want to. You can sell your services and sell things to other players and earn your money that way. So for example, a lot of new players when they're starting out, they will offer to dig dirt for someone else or mine for someone else. Or they will offer to fill frying pans for cooking for someone else. The general rule of thumb is that a player is paid 10 iron per action. There we go, disembark. We're home. And so you can earn, you can definitely earn your 10 silver that way for a month of premium. And after a month, who knows, maybe you've, maybe you've played enough to work your skills even higher so that you're able to sell a couple of things. I have two merchants set up. Now I normally, I, I pay my, my subscription just yearly because it takes care of it and I don't have to worry about it anymore. What I do is I have two merchants set up at a market not too far away from here and I put my items on them and then players can go through and purchase them from me for silver and then I use that silver to pay for my deed and to pay for the property because the property has a little bit of a monthly cost to it. It's not that expensive. This one here, this, this whole entire property that I've got right here, including the guard, I believe it's three silver a month. So that's like three dollars a month if that for the whole property and then 
another two silver for the place down south because it doesn't have a guard. Guards are really expensive. So it's not, it's not so bad, and I really, really appreciate that I can pay for it without having to use, you know, my credit card or anything like that. And of course, the larger the property that you own, the more expensive it's going to be every month. So you could have, you could make the property as big as you want. If you wanted your property to go from here, way over to those mountains over there, you definitely could. As long as no one else had a property that was in the way, because obviously you can't take over somebody else's property like that. If they've paid for a deed or they've placed buildings up, etc., you kind of have to let them have it. They were there first. But aside from that, if there's nothing else stopping you, you can make it as big as you want. So lots of people on the other servers, especially the PvP servers, they'll create these ginormous PvP deeds. And then they'll split it between their clan mates, between their friends and their alliances. So that it's not all resting on just one person. But me, for this small place, I don't mind. The cost is not bad. So as you can see, my property is actually divided into four quarters. Well, it's divided into quarters, not four quarters. So over here I've got the breeding, and that's the sheep and the horses. Over here I've got my farm, which I need to take care of. But I'm going to do that when I'm offline, because taking care of a farm in Worm Online is the most boring thing in existence. So that's my farm and my cows. Over here I've got my blacksmithing, a storage shed, and my kitchen. So this is my storage. It's really boring. These are empty crates. Those are full crates. Fountain for drinking. This is my kitchen. I usually have my priests do the cooking because they get a better skill gain and it's used for priest skills as opposed to my main character who it would just kind of be wasted on. This is my blacksmithing building. This is where Stargrace spends most of her time, sitting here on this nice rug. And then if we continue over here, they've recently added a lot more items to the game, a lot more housing items like decoration and just furniture that you can place. I don't quite have the skill yet in order to make all the really awesome things like canopy beds and stuff like that. You need to have a really high skill in fine carpentry. But uh, I'm working on it. And I apologize if I feel if I sound stuffed up. There's actually like wildfires going on all around and the smoke is really bad today and it's affecting my allergies and whatnot. So I probably sound horrible, but uh, I do apologize for that. So this is my house. See, that's the canopy bed. It came with the deed. I didn't build this property. This property is one that I purchased. So, oh, I can hear a spider. The little click click sound. Another bedroom with a lot of chests and some fireplaces. You hear that? You hear that click click? Isn't it creepy? <laughs> I'll go upstairs. So it's just for show. It doesn't have any real purpose aside from the fact that most of the shelves they're all containers so I can store stuff in them. What I've been meaning to do is to fuel my candles you can see they're not lit up right now because there's no fuel in them. So I have a box out here that's absolutely filled with wax from animals, like fat from them. Oh, there's the spider. See, he can't get in here because there's a wall and then the house in the way. But he'll just make his noise outside of my house and drive me insane. Anyway, as I was saying, I have a box over here filled with animal fat that I'm supposed to be making into candles one of these days, but there's always so much to do. Things slowly take decay over time, so I can spend an entire play session just going around repairing things that are outside. Well, these are all good. They don't need repairing. Maybe I did it not that long ago. And you don't want them to decay, because when they decay, they poof, and then you don't have them anymore. And that would make me sad. I store things. Yeah, there we go. I store things inside of this tower. You can walk right through it. It's, you know, it's hollow. And then I have my token here, where I can see all of the stats about my place. I like to keep at least 200 days of upkeep on it. I don't play Worm every single day, and I can go, you know, a week or two without logging my character in. If you don't pay the upkeep on your deed, your deed will um, disband, and then other players can come in and take your stuff, because it's no longer protected. They can bash down fences. 
that's one of the downsides to Worm that some people might find a little disheartening. I personally think it's awesome. It teaches players how to keep their stuff safe, how to value what they've got, and it also teaches you how not to be so attached to your material objects that you've got like lying on the ground and stuff. Especially as a new player, if you're just starting out, chances are you don't have iron or access to locks and stuff like that. So you might not realize that if you drop something on the ground, someone else is going to come along and pick that up, and they're going to keep it, even if it's the most useless piece of belly button flint that they've ever seen before. Chances are they're going to think it's awesome, and they're going to have some use for it, so they're going to grab it. And you might even confront them and be like, hey dude, why why did you just take my belly button flint? And come on now. But the rule of thumb in Worm Online is lock it or lose it or deed it or lose it. You know, those are those are words to live by. You really want to make sure that all of your stuff is well protected. You can make locks on your carts. No one can pick those locks here on the Freedom servers, so you don't have to worry about them. Now, if you're not careful, people can drag them off and go hide them someplace where you can't find them. So you usually put it in a little fenced-in area, lock that too, and then people can't take it. <laughs> this is where I keep my priests. Um, I keep them here at their altars. Now they're corpses, so remember I told you that the mobs were coming along and smashing my guys? <laughs> yeah, remember I said that I'm, I'm watching Twitch chat. Somebody talked. Oh, yay. Anyways, um, remember I said my priests were getting smashed? Mm, that's their bodies lying on the ground. This is my mine. You can see the corpses from mobs that have spawned here. My guards take care of all that. I haven't done a whole lot of work here. Like I said, this is my second place. It's not my main place. So the mine at my other place is quite a bit larger. But, you know, I do what I can. Go downstairs here. Things are not supposed to typically spawn on your property. They normally spawn off of your property and then wander onto your property. But for some reason on my property, things, like, spawn. So I have to be really careful. Oh, see, there's a rat here. My guard doesn't reach out this far. Well, let's get rid of that. It's usually safe down here. My priests don't come down here. Very darn, she can handle these things. But, you know, vermin in my cave. I don't know it's vermin. So that's my property up to the north. A little bit about Worm Online, a little bit about the combat system. It's on my neighbor's place. It's way more impressive. Play. There we go. So I think I'm going to leave it here for now. And I'll probably be doing more streaming in the future. Maybe a little bit more exciting. I know Worm is not normal for me, okay? And like I said, earlier. That is exactly why I like it. I like the slow pace. I like how relaxed it is. I like that I can multitask and switch different things in the background while I'm working on my skills. I think next time I'll show you, maybe I'll go through and show you just what it's like to sit back and <laughs> relax and work on those skills. I'm actually going to be working on natural subsistence. That is a skill. It's an alchemy skill. It lets me create dye so that I can dye buildings and carts and pretty much anything. Well, not anything. You can't dye your gear yet, unfortunately. You can dye it, but show the color. You can see these statues over here. They've been dyed. Not by me. I'm going to work on my natural subsistence skills so that I can make dyes that are just as vibrant as this. If your skill is low, the dye will be washed out in gray. And I'm tired of having washed out gray colors. So, that's what I'm going to be working on next. If you happen to log into Worm Online and you want to say hello, please feel free. You can find me there as Star Grace. And uh, if you're watching the channel, please watch. I'll upload it later. Don't forget to follow. Thanks so much. I appreciate it.